Hello and welcome to a special edition of Design Education Talks. Today with us, we have Christopher Scott uh, that will talk to us on uh, many things uh, about the Ecuador poster Biennale. So um, welcome, Christopher. Oh, thank you very much, Letros, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you to, to talk about some important things. It's fantastic to have you here. So tell us about the Ecuador poster Biennale. So the Ecuador Poster Biennale uh, started in 2015 uh, when, well, I arrived to Ecuador a few years before that. And in Ecuador, we have so much talent, uh, so much creativity in the country. Um, it's also amazing how we connect the culture to design also. And I sat beside uh, my good friend, Santiago Gomez, um, in a meeting, and we were, we were like, let's do something. Let's make something for the country to celebrate design. Because in Ecuador, it's a smallish country. Um, it's a beautiful country, but design is not maybe as important uh, in society as, as it should be. So we were like, let's do something to show the importance of design, to show the talent and creativity of the Ecuadorian designers and also the continent and international designers. And we were like, let's think of some ideas. We had many ideas, um, but we the one that was the most that we connected to was let's make like a, a biennale of poster, right? Because we both, me and Santiago, love the poster. Um, and a Biennale is, is a, a great platform and an, a great system in, in relation to um, um, in relation to pr uh, promoting design and the importance of design. So um, we did it. Um, we started in 2015. We did the first edition in 2016, uh, which was an amazing experience because we were like, I had some experience in organizing events and exhibitions and stuff but not to this scale. So it was an amazing experience. And to cut a, a long story short, um, we have now done three editions, which was 2016, 2018, and 2020. And we have received in those three editions over 30,000 posters from 84 countries all around the world which is absolutely crazy to me. Um, and it's and just bit by bit, day by day, we've built this amazing community of poster designers, graphic designers, visual artists, um, that is day by day, one of the most important BNLs uh, in the world, to be honest. And then now we're on the, on the, on the edge of the fourth edition, which um, officially launches on the 2nd of August, which is Monday. So me and my team, which is an amazing team um, of designers and organizers, um, we've been working the last six, seven, eight months, getting everything ready for next week. So yeah, it's been a, been a roller coaster of a few weeks, but yeah, we're, we're getting everything ready bit by bit. Fantastic. Yeah. Is there a special theme to, to, to this one? So, so yeah, so the system of the, the Ecuador post to 2022 is um, we have five categories. Um, the category A is advertising posters. So any posters in the advertising space. Um, and people also, a uh, send comments, what happens if I did an advertising work, but it was re rejected, you can still send that. Anything that's connected to advertising, you can send, even if a student did an advertising work uh, for like a proposal, you can also send that also. Um, so that's the first category, category A. Category B is social, cultural, and political. Um, and that's obviously um, anything related to like a, a social topic, political posters, and maybe like cultural events, um, all around those type of areas is the category B. Then the category C 
is for students. And for me, that's one of the most important categories because um, in those biennales in general, they're more concentrated on celebrating the work of the professionals, right? Like the Nicholas Troxlers, the Stefan Sagmeisters, the Paul Shares, all those big names, David Carsons and all those big names. Um, but we decided from the very start, from the year 2015, we need, the BNL needs to be for everyone, not just for the big shot designers, but also for like the future of design in Ecuador and the future of design in the world. Um, so we made a special category for students that can be any topic. So if you're doing a work in a classroom or you're doing a work for maybe like a freelance client, it can, the, the topic of students can be anything. So we're giving them the opportunity to, to send any work that they want uh, for that category. But it's Exciting. an open topic. It's an open topic, which Fantastic. is very important because in, I know because I'm a teacher myself, um, a, you can have a class of illustration, you can have a class of photography, you can have a class of typography, and every class is different, right? But all of those proposals, you can send all to the Ecuador post Banal 2022. So that's the idea of that, what any university, any classroom or teacher can work with us, contact us, and the, the, the semester and the class can be part of the, the Ecuador post Banal in that way. And then we have the category D, um, which is um, animated posters, which is something that we um, brought into the Biennial in the last edition from the 2020 ed edition. We brought in this animated posters, which is absolutely fascinating to me. Um, and that's probably, people always say to me, what's the future of design? Or more importantly, what's the future of the poster? And for me, it's that interaction with the animation with the, the graphics um, and that's an amazing category. And it's also amazing how the Biennale and how we inter integrated the animated poster into the gallery, because basically you have two ways of doing it. You can either um, show like a digital screen and then just show the loop of the posters, but we never thought that was interesting or we never really thought that that was given justice to every single poster that was selected in the animated category because it's a loop. No one's going to sit in front of a loop of a TV screen watching um, like 50 posters or something like that, yeah. right? So we, we, I was talking to my good friend, Eric Bratchbull from Switzerland, which would be an amazing guest, to be honest, for you. And he's a really great, great uh, innovator in terms of graphic design. And he said, there's this amazing technology, which is Arte Vive. So basically you use, um, you, like for example, you can print a poster on a wall, right? So for example, I can do it here now if you want. So sure. this is a poster of Eric Bratchpool, right? Right? And basically the app is called Arte Vive. And you load up the app, right? I don't know if you can see. And you yeah, can see. yeah, yeah, yeah. You scan the poster. Yeah. And then the poster animates. So it's like an augmented reality. Automated reality, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. you can walk and wow. You can see the different angles, and it's pretty cool, right? So that was our uh, we actually first did it. It was amazing the experience because I was in um I collected uh, Eric Bratchpool in 2018 at the airport in Quito. And we were in the airport. And um, I was just sitting with him in the taxi and I was like, this is super cool because Eric Bratchpool is like a pure, is like a master. Everyone loves him. He's invited all around the world to do exhibitions, conferences and stuff like that. And I was just talking to him and we had an exhibition of his posters in the gallery. Whenever we were in the taxi, all the invited people for the VNL were arriving in 2018. I think it was like October, 2018, I think. Um, and the, all the posters of the Biennale selected and Eric Bratchpool and all these people were in the gallery already in the, in the gallery waiting for the inauguration, right? And I was just sitting talking to him and I was like, oh, your posters are amazing. How did you do the animation posters? And then he started talking to me about this technology. Yeah. And I was like, 
So you're telling me now, if I walk into the gallery where your poster is now, which was the Casa de Cultura in Quito, that I could use this app and scan your poster and see the animation. And he was like, yeah. And I said, like, what? And I was like, crazy. And then we did a publication the next day on the Ecuador Post to be an Al website on the, that you can do this technology with the posters. Mm. And then we, um, then the media arrived to the launch of the exhibition and people loved it. They were with their phones. You know, the way that young people are, right? Let's throw us, it's like they're with their phones all the time, scanning stuff, taking selfies and stuff like that. And it was amazing to, um, to have that experience. And that's, that's a really, so the, the idea of the Aquara post terminal is that you walk into like a separate room, like a separate section and you have all the posters in the wall and you basically you scan one by one very quickly because you don't need like codes. You don't need any of this thing. Yeah. You scan one by one and you have all these amazing, amazing experiences. Right. So that was the, what opened our mind to the possibility of the animated poster and the category E which is the the last category is the one that I can't mention yet. Okay. Um, it's going to be a special category um, for, which is all it's, it's connected to Ecuador. Um, it's a very beautiful category and, but also international designers can, can participate also. So, so those the, are mystery, the, category. the mystery category will, will know this Monday. Yeah, we know it. And Monday, the 2nd of August, everything Fantastic. will be. Uh, so how how can we submit to the Biennale? So uh, we have a website, which is EcuadorPosterBiennale.com. Um, so on that website, you uh, the if you go in now, it just has like like a website that says we're coming in the second of, and um, we're launching in the second of August. Um, but if you go in on the second of August. Um, for the, those people who are maybe out, like clicking the button, maybe you can go in the 1st of August in, in the evening maybe, but uh, the, the website will be activated. And then um, from that website, the, from the 2nd of August, you'll have all the list of the jury. Um, I can't say any of the jury now, of unfortunately, course. unfortunately, um, for, for legal reasons, but um, the, so the jury, uh, you can see all the information of the categories, all the deadlines, the the dates, important dates in, in, in respect of the schedule and all that information. Um, from the 1st of September, you will be able to upload the work. So this month is going to be promotion, hype, more than anything else, getting everyone excited to, be, uh, to get ready to send their work, to see the jury members and things like that, and to see the categories. So, and interviews with the jury, we're going to do also live streams and things like that over this month. But from the 1st of September, you'll be able to upload the, upload the works on the Ecuador post to be now website. Very important information letters also, we don't accept um, posters by email, um, no posters by Facebook or Instagram, <laughs> things like that, because we have like an online system. Of course. Thanks to my amazing brother, uh, he made like an amazing system where you upload that and that's where the jury vote from. They don't vote from like email or social media or anything like that. Of course. So very important. Excellent. So this is super exciting. And uh, I think you want to talk about also the power of the poster as well. Yeah. So um, the poster is something that I have loved since I was... 16, 15, 16. Um, so that was like the beginning of design for me was in the year 2002. Um, and when I was, uh, yeah, when I was 16 years old and it opened my eyes on like the power of the poster, like everyone knows, like the poster of Che Guevara by Jim Fitzpatrick and um, all like the iconic posters that we have received over time. And then bit by bit, when I went to university, I learned other, other um, iconic images. And it's unbelievable, like the power and the influence of the poster in society uh, in terms of like the history. The history of the poster is very, very long. And I think it's very, very, in, very important for students also in terms of um, 
understanding the history and the importance of the poster in graphic design because essentially it was the beginning. The beginning of graphic design was essentially the poster um, with other aspects like letter press and stuff like that too, right? Um, but and but it's very interesting also in that history how the poster adapted and survived over the period of time when other uh, forms of media have died and passed away, right? Um, like everyone knows, like editorial design, like books and magazines are less and less, right? So I remember even before I would walk into a shop when I was a young kid and there's just magazines everywhere, right? And books everywhere. And then bit by bit, um, some like media is, is dying away, but poster um, is still continuing, is still growing. And part of that is thanks obviously to social media and memes and gifs and all these types of things but it's amazing uh, the influence like that one image has on a society and i love there's always a free there's this like cliche phrase but it's an awesome phrase right that one image can speak like a thousand words right is that what it is or something like that something. right yes of um, course um and it's and it's amazing and it's true right because like the image of like Che Guevara, which actually, if I can move. <laughs> so here, this is the this is the tube. I, I'm mentioning Che Guevara, and this is the original Che Guevara poster signed by Jim Fitzpatrick in this tube, and um, which is a lot of, uh, which is amazing, and and that image alone is one of the most iconic images of all time. Like there was a book published um, of the 100 images most important in the world. And that was number three, even ahead of the Mona Lisa, which uh, by Leonardo da Vinci was like, it's like crazy, right? So like, uh, it's just amazing how one image and one poster can, can not, uh, not change the world, but changed maybe like the life of a, of a person. I remember I did a workshop in like a, a workshop in a small city um, in Ecuador and a person seen a poster that was done by one of the students in the workshop and the person just started crying because it really connected, it really like it made emotional um connection to that image and that's the power of like uh, of an image absolutely and and that's amazing to be honest it's like just like music it's the same thing right you listen to a certain song and you you feel certain emotions and um and the and a poster is the same it connects to the best posters and it connects to the heart connects to to what you feel and that's not just in terms of a poster but that's graphic design in general of course of course um but it's such an important media. And I always say to my students, if you want to be a good graphic designer, you need to be able to make a good poster. Um, if you can't, because in the, in the poster, it has everything. People always say to me, ah, poster needs to be a certain way, a certain format and, st and things like that. But no, a poster is simply the space, vertical, horizontal, squared, whatever and also the style it can be photography typography illustration um, infographics anything that you want it's just the space and you can adapt whatever way you want um to that visual um that visual image but the, the poster has everything in it you have to understand composition you have to understand color you have to understand typography you have to understand the importance of um, um, different uh, structures of design in general, the investigation concept, um, uh, sketching, everything. Of course. Fantastic. So this is very exciting time. And I think we'll all be waiting uh, to discover the mysterious fifth category. Uh, <laughs> And also, would love to see your your your, your Binale and your work on uh, Design Education Forum on the 11th and 12th of this uh, November. 
Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, thank you again, Lepters, for the invitation to oh, be part uh, of the forum. It's going to be amazing. Um, I need to get everything ready for my conference, but uh, yeah, I'm super yeah. excited. Was this a and, time? Um, I'm really Excellent. looking forward to it. But yeah, just to mention, uh, before we go, um, also um, a certain, uh, like some dates uh -huh. that are important of the Biennale. And um, so for example, the launch of the, the event, which is just going to be on the 2nd of August. And then from the 1st of September, you can upload the work um, until the 31st of May, 2022. That's a long, that's a long time frame. A long time, but it's very important, the time for universities, for studios, yeah. to yeah. Um, get everything into line and everything into system for in terms of that. And then from the month of June and July, we'll do the jury process. Um, there's a three uh, teams of jury, um, and which is like 30 people in total, because we're expecting a lot of posters. Yeah. So we have like three filters. Um, to get down to the, to the selected works and also this, the winners. And uh, the results will be on the th uh, 31st of July, 2022. And then the opening ceremony of the exhibitions and the Congress and, and the events in general will be uh, at the end of August, sorry, at the end of October, 2022. Very um, exciting. So yeah, we're, we're super excited. And um, it's an amazing, the team, the team of the Biennale is unbelievable. Um, for me, it's like we have a small team of ten people, but um, they're the the this project is 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 made by made by them, and it shows the power of like working together as a collaboration. Um, because that's when you make the best projects, right? We're doing this uh, video together, and it's it's like together, right? It's collaborating with two people together. Absolutely. And that's the, the, the energy and, and the connection. And, and that's the thing that we need to work more in design, I think, because in design, everyone thinks, oh, I can do everything on my own. Um, and ego gets into the situation and things like that. But the best projects and the best way of doing design is when you work with other people. And working with other people is the key to the Aquila Post Biennale and to the success of the project. Absolutely, that's 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 that's, that's absolutely true. Thank you so much, Christopher, for uh, for this, and we're looking forward to to the Biennale itself. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Biennale also, and I'll join you all in the Design Forum in, in November. Excellent, excellent. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye.